We all know that the iPhone 12 is fast. However, how fast is it really? To find out, we have a series of tests to run against the iPhone 11 Pro, the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, as well as the little Google Pixel 5. To start out with, we're gonna go with the good old classic of Geekbench 5, one of my favorite tests to really give you a good sense of the overall system performance of each of these devices. So we'll start out on the iPhone 12 Pro, then we'll get started on the 11 Pro, on the Note 20, as well as on the Pixel 5. Now going into this, I absolutely expect the iPhones to do very well here. Traditionally, the iPhone 11 Pro has been the most powerful smartphone that you can buy right now, and the 12 Pro promises to be somewhere in the 15 to 20% better range. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be a massive step forward, right? It's one thing to have a higher Geekbench score, and it's a very different thing to actually see that performance in real world use. For example, the Google Pixel 5, by far the least powerful phone here, does have something that the iPhones lack, which is a high refresh rate display. I'll just say as someone who's been dailing that Pixel 5 for a little while, the smoothness that you get from the display can oftentimes make it feel more responsive than a phone that while it, yes, has a lot more power on the inside, doesn't have that fluidity on the screen. But of course, when it comes to benchmarking and using a phone, there's a lot more to it than just uh, the smoothness of the scroll. For example, if you're rendering video or playing a game or something, that is where these benchmarks can make a much bigger difference compared to the just, uh, ah, this feels fast. All right, 1605 single core, 4033 multi-core. That is, well, better than the iPhone 11 Pro. So it's not a huge margin, so we have a couple hundred more, like just a little bit less than 300 on single core, about 500 less on multi-core. But that is still a reasonable improvement. And you also have to keep in mind that specifically with that iPhone 12 Pro, the A14 chip inside is the basis for all of the new Mac chips, right? So what you see with the performance on this iPhone is probably not going to be wildly different than the kind of performance that you see in a full-fledged Mac that we will be getting fairly shortly, which is impressive in some ways, although that is, uh, that's fast. Let's see how the Note comes in. And we get... 980 single core, 3246 multi core. So it does get closer on the multi core, and that is because both of these Android phones actually have eight core processors, whereas the iPhones have six cores. The Pixel 5, look, it's, it's the little guy, right? So it is powered by a Snapdragon 765G processor, a mid range, but a very competent chip. It can't quite compete, but that's fine because there's a whole lot more to the, the just pure benchmarks and pure. CPU, I'm not saying that because I feel bad for the Pixel right now. He's like less than half of any of the others. <laughs> Next up we have a benchmark which is a little bit more tailored toward the actual web performance of these devices which is Jetstream 2. So the way this works is not wildly different than Geekbench, so it runs a series of different tests and then gives you a final score. But this will give you a much better sense for how performant these devices are when it comes to things like web pages, which when you look at apps are pretty much everywhere these days. This internet thing, it's got a future. It's funny looking at these phones, it's just how massive the Note 20 really is. I feel like I'm over big phones in 2020. I want the small boys. I want the little chunguses. I want the medium chunguses. Oh, okay, we have a score, 182.6 on the 12 Pro. And we have 156.7 on the iPhone. All right, I mean, that is roughly consistent with the difference we saw in Geekbench. And our score is 73. Wow, so the Note 20 is less than half the score of the 11 Pro, much less the 12 Pro. I mean, there's clearly a lot more than just the pure hardware going on here. I do think the difference between Safari and Chrome is one of the big differences that we're seeing. So these two are certainly much closer than there's the gap between the Android and the iPhones. So this isn't particularly close, but you know what is close? The segue to our sponsor today, Audible. I was much more proud of that one in my head than I actually am in person. Audible, of course, are the leading provider of spoken word entertainment and audiobooks. And recently, they've rolled out their new Audible Plus program, which, as a member, gives you access to not only a wide variety of Audible originals, but also access to a ton of other content, including audiobooks, podcasts, fitness programs, and so much more. It literally is a big step up from just the old, oh, I listen to a book on Audible every once in a while. They have you covered across the board. If you're an Audible subscriber, you get access to one credit per month, which you can use for any audiobook in their library. And there are thousands and thousands available. So recently I've been listening to Artemis by Andy Weir, the author of The Martian, but of course you can pick literally whatever you want that Audible has. And believe me when I say, they've got a lot of options. 
So what are you waiting for? Go check out Audible at the link in the description at audible.com slash Austin, or you can text Austin to 500-500. Again, that's audible.com slash Austin, or text Austin to 500-500. And as always, huge shout out to Audible for sponsoring this video. So the test that I most want to see is the graphics test, specifically when it comes to gaming. So we have 3D Mark Wildlife. And essentially, this is a one-minute benchmark that does its best to emulate what it would be like to running a very, very high-end game on your device. And immediately, the iPhones are doing really well. Surprise, surprise. Now, this is a short demo. It's only one minute long, and it is meant to emulate what it's like to play a very, very intensive game, but short, bursty segments, right? So you're not going to see that sort of 20-minute stress test, which we're about to do. This is more so of the best case scenario for these phones, almost kind of taking the cooling out of the equation, because pretty much any phone can run warm for at least a minute. And we have some scores. We have 39 FPS on the iPhone, and wow, we burned 3% of battery in one minute. Wait a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on. The 11 Pro beat the 12 Pro? I don't know if I believe that. So we burned 3% of battery on both of these. And the frame rate was way more inconsistent on the 11 Pro. So it was 21 to 60 versus 31 to 47. Interesting. So we definitely need to run this again. I don't know if I necessarily trust that the 11 Pro is faster, but it's very clear that the Pixel graphics are way, way behind. 6 FPS compared to 25 compared to 39 and 42. Let's run this one more time and see. That's very interesting. The 11 Pro is still consistently staying a little bit above it. God, the Pixel's so, so sad. Wow! The 11 Pro beat out the 12 again. Are you trying to tell me right now that the 12 Pro does not perform as well in graphic tasks compared to the 11? That's really surprising. So generally speaking, when it comes to graphics, there are a couple of things to watch. First of all is the overall frames per second, right? So higher is better, smoother. But the downside to that is that that's just an average. So what you can see here is that while the average on the 12 Pro is lower, it stays very consistent, right? It went from 32 to 42, but it stays very close to 40 the entire time. The 11 Pro is way more sort of peaky. So yes, it does go up higher, but also there are a lot of points where it can go lower than that 40 FPS line. Okay, you know what we need to do? We need to do the stress test. So there's another portion of this test which will allow us to take a closer look at what these phones will do under sustained load. So this is just a one minute benchmark, but the full stress test is 20 minutes. That I think will help us determine whether or not the 11 Pro is just sort of peaking and is going to hit some kind of thermal barrier, or if the 12 Pro is legitimately slower in games than the 11 Pro. Oh, this just got spicy, my friends. So while these benchmarks are running, I have a Seek thermal camera, which will give us a little bit of a better idea of how warm they're getting and specifically where the warm spots are. So first of all, wow, there's a major difference. The 11 Pro is very warm. That's looking at what, 43 degrees, but it's spread out across a huge part of the phone. Whereas with the 12, what you can actually see is the, where the MagSafe, the coil is, is slightly cooler. Interesting. Now when we look at the Samsung, I mean, it's not even close. It's nowhere near as warm. We're looking at 35 degrees or so. And the Pixel is like ice cold. That's very interesting because actually in sort of real world use, I've noticed that out of all these phones, the Pixel seems to be a little bit warmer when you're doing things like, you know, running the camera or doing anything that's mildly intensive. I always find that the Pixel is a little bit more warm to the touch. But part of that could be because this is an aluminum phone, whereas the other three all have glass backs. Now, all of these phones have throttling mechanisms. So essentially, as the temperature either of the processor or of the actual exterior of the phone gets too hot, it will pull the power down, first of all, to save your battery life, but also just to keep the phone from being physically too warm. I'm sure at this point, all of them with the potential exception of the Pixel, maybe the Note 20, are sort of lowering their performance as the test goes on. But that being said, I mean, that's, that's a pretty major difference. I have no idea what's gonna happen when we flip these phones over when the test is done. I have no idea. This really puts it into perspective. The Pixel is ice cold by comparison. The Note is pretty warm, and if I actually touch it, that's pretty toasty. That's a little bit warmer than I'd like to actually use. But the 12 and the 11 both are really, really hot. I think there's a clear difference though between totally fine, pretty warm, very warm, extremely warm. Now, I guess all that's left to do is to see exactly what the scores are to see if all that heat means that the 12 Pro can outperform the 11 Pro or whether the new phone is just slightly cooler and less powerful. Let's see what we've got. So they should be almost done. 
the 12 Pro. Yeah, 20-ish FPS. So yeah, we're definitely seeing that these phones have thermal throttled. Although, you know what, look at that. The 11 Pro, I can see just side by side, looks to be the same, if not slightly faster. Ooh, that's really close. All right, so, oh yeah, you can see right there. Look, it definitely kind of lowered over time. So, stability 71% on the 12 versus 64, but the scores were very similar. But I think the 12 Pro, that's, that's a tough one. That's certainly not a major improvement at all, at all. The first thing I wanna take a look at is the stability number. So that is the difference between the best and the worst case scenario. So you can see here that we basically have very consistent performance on the Note up until about the 12 minute line and then it started to come down. The Pixel though is almost a dead even line. You can see that, it is a 94% stability versus 81 on the, the Note. On the iPhones, it is significantly worse, 71% and 64%. But that being said, the iPhones, even at their worst case where they're losing a lot of the performance, 4600 is still much better than even the best case score on the Note 20. So the best loop is definitely on the 11, right? If you're looking at the raw performance, the 11 is best. However, if you look at the way that the performance kind of dropped and came back, short of a couple of low numbers on the 12 for some reason, it seemed like it held a little bit more consistent, whereas the 11 definitely dropped a touch more. So regardless, the iPhones, surprise, surprise, are more powerful than any Android phone out right now, right? That is not a huge contest. I mean, the fact is the iPhone team has been absolutely killing it on the spec side of things for many years. But it is not quite as clear cut going from the 11 to the 12 as you might expect. Yeah, on the CPU side, the 12 is the undisputed king. When it comes to graphics, it's a bit of a toss up. I still think I would probably take a phone which is close to that same level of performance, but runs a little bit cooler and doesn't burn up quite so much battery. But uh, that's, a, that's a little bit of a toss up there. So I'm curious, which phone do you think won the speed test? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for lots more content like this. And until next time, I'm gonna go enjoy the cool pixel and let the toasty boys do their own thing.